Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Harrison and today we are going to be looking at my top five games of 2017. I'd like to preface this by saying that these are in no particular order, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, like they're in no particular order, nothing uh, beats out the other game. I just put them in these order just because I wanted to, just because, you know, I could. I'd also like to thank all of the new followers on my Twitch channel. I really appreciate you all. We've been streaming a lot of games on the channel recently. Uh, most most uh, recently, we've been streaming Fortnite and uh, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle since I got my Switch for Christmas. So thank you to all of you guys for the support. It really, really helps me out, and I really, really appreciate it. With all that being said, let's get into my top five games of 2017. And the number five spot is a game that I was not plan planning on buying, and a game that I definitely think I was not going to like, is Resident Evil 7. Now, I'm not a huge Resident Evil fan. I haven't played any of the other Resident Evils, so I don't really have that appreciation for all the other Resident Evils. Um, I know 5 and 6 were really, really bad, um, and then 4 and down were very good, so 5 and 6 kind of fell off, and then 7 kind of brought... Uh, the whole series back together to where it used to be. Um, and I can appreciate that. I can understand that. But I thought the game was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. I thought it was a gripping story. The gameplay was great. I loved how there were scarce resources. You really had to think and be uh, strategic. Um, I also think that playing with my girlfriend uh, with this game made uh, the experience that much um, that much better in terms of um, just doing my series on my YouTube channel because this is back when I used to do parts on my YouTube channel. I also thought the characters in uh, Resident Evil 7 were pretty good as well. I love the Baker family. I love the main protagonist. Um, I thought the whole like story with the little girl was kind of weird but enticing. Um, but overall, I just really, really like this game. And if you guys want to go pick up a scary game that's first person and just get freaked the hell out, I highly recommend picking up Resident Evil 7. And in my number four spot is Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, you guys probably know, if you guys have been following me for a very long time, that uh, I absolutely loved this game. It was, uh, it was the first time in a while where I'd stay up to like four in the morning and completely just lose track of time. I remember watching this game back at E3 and instantly being like, I gotta pick this up. Like, this game looks great. It looks just super original. I just can't, I could not take my eyes away from the screen when I was watching E3. <laughs> and so I'm very glad I picked it up because I did almost everything you could in that game. I got all the collectibles, all the weapons, all the upgrades for those weapons. I, I you know, discovered all the robot dinosaurs. I went to all the locations. I got all the campfires. I, I um, got all the tall necks. I... I completed the story. I got to the highest level in the in the game at the time, and I just I I loved that game so much. I don't think I've had that much fun with a game since Infamous Second Son, and I've enjoyed games since then. But I remember being just so gripped by Second Son and just loving that game as a whole. And I really think that if you guys want to experience a third person open world exploration type of game with robot dinosaurs and a bow as your main weapon, please go pick this up because it is. Just one of my favorite games of 2017, and I don't think it gets enough love. So please go do yourself a favor and pick it up. And my number three spot is South Park The Fractured But Whole. Now, I went in South Park The uh, Stick of Truth was one of the first games I actually played on my YouTube channel, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I was kind of going in a little skeptical because I was not a huge fan of the show. I'm, I've never been a huge fan of the show, um, but I wanted to pick up The Stick of Truth because I really wanted to play a South Park game because I never have before. And so I picked it up, and I was very, very surprised, and I really enjoyed The Stick of Truth, and that was the same with The Fractured But Whole. I really enjoyed the whole hero aspect. I love how they changed up the combat with the tiles. I think uh, adding, adding, the, the, adding that tile combat system was a great great change i really really enjoyed that i thought the story was pretty great um it's just all it's just crude humor uh, it's not even that crude honestly it's not as crude as the show i don't think um but i thought it was just great humor uh great story great characters as always and um if you guys love south park you guys will probably love the fractured but but if you do not love south park i would still highly recommend going and picking up the fractured but because um, I just think it's overall a fantastic game. Now, second on my list is Uncharted The Lost Legacy. I must say, when I first saw this at E3, um, I was very, very, very skeptical. Um, I've, I'm a huge fan of the Uncharted series. I've played every single one, one, two, three, and four. 
And um, I was just very, very skeptical. I didn't know how I'd feel about an Uncharted without Nathan Drake. I don't know if Naughty Dog would handle it correctly. Um, especially since they first advertised it as kind of like a DLC for Uncharted 4, which I'm very, very happy that they decided to kind of branch it off and make it its own little thing, which I'm, I'm very, very happy that they did that. Um, but after playing it and after experiencing the story... I loved it. I thought that Naughty Dog did a fantastic job with keeping that uncharted feel, but with different characters. I thought Nadine and Chloe did I, were, were fantastic characters in the game. I do remember playing or seeing Nadine in four, and then Chloe in two, and just wanting to know more about them as a whole. Like I thought they were just kind of plain side characters, and I, we didn't really get to see um, a whole lot with them. So I'm really glad that they dove more in depth to their characters in Uncharted The Lost Legacy. That made me really, really happy. If any of you are still skeptical about Uncharted The Le Lost Legacy, please don't be. I enjoyed it. Lots of other people enjoyed it. And if you guys liked 1, 2, 3, and 4, you guys will most definitely enjoy Uncharted The Lost Legacy. It is literally Uncharted, and even more so, but with just different characters, the Nadine and Chloe and not Nathan. So please go do yourself a favor and pick this game up. And last but not least on my list is Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy. Crash Bandicoot is a series that I hold near and dear to my heart. I l very much so love the whole series. Um, I remember as a kid playing those games with my dad and being just absolutely intrigued by the levels and just Crash himself. Um, and when I heard... When I, when I saw on E3 that they were bringing the, all three games back, I literally lost my shit. Like, <laughs> I was so, so happy. Um, and it was actually, actually the, the game came out right when I got back from my trip in Switzerland. And I just played the crap out of all three of them. Um, I enjoyed them a lot. I thought that they did a great job remastering um, all three. Crash looked fantastic. The levels looked great. Um, I think the only thing that they actually changed in uh, the game, what like like mechanically, was the jump. I know that a lot of people said that the jump was a little bit harder, um, but it, honestly, you can't really tell all that much. Um, but overall, I had a great time with the Insane Trilogy. If you guys are if you guys are fans of Crash Bandicoot himself, please go do yourself a favor and pick up the trilogy i really really hope that they either a remaster more crash games or b just bring us new ones i would love love for sony to bring us new crash bandicoot games i would for sure pick them up if they're anything like the remasters for one two and three i would for sure give the new games a shot and i'd also like to see um uh remasters of like spyro like uh, why like why not the crash bandicoot and scene trilogy made so much money for them you know why not just make spyro why not just remaster spyro i think that would make them a ton of money as well um, but yeah, overall, if you guys like platforming, if you guys like Crash Bandicoot, please go pick this game up because it is absolutely one of my favorite games of 2017. Although those are my top five games, I would like to make some honorable mentions. I have five honorable mentions. Um, the first one being Destiny 2. I had some pretty unforgettable experiences in that game. I don't really play it as much now because I think the content is pretty lacking. Um, but I did have some fun experiences when that game first came out. And uh, I do think, even though it's in a bit of a hole right now, <laughs> and they're trying to dig themselves out of that hole, that um, when it first came out, I had a fun time with it. Mass Effect Andromeda being my second honorable mention. I am not a, I did not play 1, 2, and 3. I don't have the sentiment as many others do with the series. Um, but my first experience with the Mass Effect series with Andromeda was pretty great. Besides the animation stuff, um, the, besides the animation issues, I had a great time with the game. So um, that's my second, my, that's my uh, second place pick for honorable mentions. Then my third, fourth, and fifth are all Nintendo games. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, uh, Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Super Mario Odyssey. Um, I am currently playing Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle right now, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, so that will definitely, I, I think it will definitely switch up my list for 2017. And I have not played Breath of the Wild or Odyssey yet, but I do have them for the Switch because I just got my Switch a couple days ago. So I do think that all three of those games will for sure change up my list for 2017. But I don't have enough time to complete them before uh, 2018 starts. So uh, I, uh, but I do plan on playing those games and seeing how it goes. So I'll let you guys know how I feel about them. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like on it make sure to follow me on my twitch channel and fall and subscribe to me on my youtube channel in terms of the following week i do plan on coming back to play more mario and rabbit's kingdom battle on tuesday and i do plan on wanting to play i do want to play some more fortnite as well and get some solo wins hopefully we were very very close last time um, but that's going to be it for the video guys thank you all for tuning in and i'll see all of you later peace